Hey everyone and welcome back to By Holly G. Welcome to today's video. So this is part two of my small series all about respiration. If you're trying to get an overview of respiration, it's probably wise to watch my first part before this one because we are going to start diving into the mechanism of respiration, specifically aerobic respiration, which uses oxygen. And we're going to be talking about glycolysis, which is the first stage of aerobic respiration which takes place in the cytoplasm of a cell. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below if you have any questions and definitely subscribe if you want to stick around for more biology content with us at Biology G. So before we look at the mechanism, I just wanted to outline some key points about glycolysis for you to remember. So the first is that glycolysis, as I said, occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. It doesn't occur in the mitochondria. Number two is that glycolysis starts with glucose, which is a six carbon molecule, or in other words, a hexo sugar or a hexose monosaccharide and the end product of glycolysis is pyruvate and we specifically derive two molecules of pyruvate from a single molecule of glucose and each pyruvate has three carbon atoms unlike glucose which has six. The third key point is that glycolysis produces a small amount of ATP we make a net of two ATP molecules for every one molecule of glucose that feeds into glycolysis. However, I will show you that in more detail later. And the final point to make before we start with the mechanism is that we generate reduced NAD or otherwise known as NADH. So at this point, I do need to introduce you to NAD and FAD, which are what we call coenzymes that basically act as hydrogen or electron carriers. Now, a coenzyme is an organic compound that is needed for the catalytic activity of another enzyme and both NAD and FAD they assist enzymes that we call dehydrogenases so these are enzymes that remove hydrogen and NAD and FAD also act as oxidizing agents which is really important to remember and if you remember from part one then an oxidizing agent is something that oxidizes something else and itself gets reduced so using oil rig where oxidation is loss of hydrogen or electrons and reduction is gain of hydrogen or electrons NAD and FAD as oxidizing agents they oxidize something else because the other substance loses hydrogen or electrons, whilst NAD and FAD become reduced because they collect or they gain those hydrogen or electrons. When NAD is reduced, it is reduced to NADH or otherwise referred to as reduced NAD. Be careful here, it's not reduced NADH, it's either NADH or reduced NAD. Those are the reduced forms. And FAD becomes reduced FAD or FADH2. So it is slightly different because it accepts two hydrogen atoms, whereas NAD only accepts one. And in respiration more broadly, we generate these reduced coenzymes, so reduced NAD and reduced FAD, which carry hydrogen or electrons. And these are then used later in respiration in the final step that is called oxidative phosphorylation. And there will be a video about that coming very soon. So now we're gonna look at the mechanism of glycolysis. And now glycolysis Glycolysis is actually a series of 10 reactions in total. However, we're going to talk through a much simpler version, which I'm going to break down into three main steps because you don't need to know all 10 reactions. And on the diagram that I'm showing you, the large circles represent carbon atoms and the smaller ones represent inorganic phosphate, PI. So step one involves glucose, this hexose sugar being phosphorylated to become phosphorylated glucose. And in order to do this, we need to use or spend two molecules of ATP because when ATP is broken down or hydrolyzed, we form a single molecule of ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate, and a single molecule of inorganic phosphate. So ATP is broken down into ADP and phosphate. Now there are three reasons or three key reasons why we phosphorylate glucose at this first step. The first reason is that we need to charge up glucose or basically make it more reactive. And as a result of making glucose more reactive by phosphorylating it, it means that the following stages of glycolysis have a lowered activation energy and so they're more likely to occur. So we charge up glucose and we make it more likely that the subsequent reactions in glycolysis will take place. The second reason for adding phosphate groups to glucose is because we need to trap glucose inside the cell so it can't escape. 
So this is what we can refer to as molecular trapping. And this is because phosphorylated glucose is a slightly different shape to glucose alone. And so that means it can't move out through the same glucose transporter that it used to get into the cell. The third reason for phosphorylating glucose is that we need to maintain a steep concentration gradient favoring the entry of glucose into the cell. So we want to make sure that we have a high concentration of glucose on the outside and a lower concentration of glucose on the inside. And that is achieved because we immediately phosphorylate glucose on the inside of the cell in the cytoplasm. So that means the concentration of non-phosphorylated glucose inside the cell is lower in comparison to the outside of a cell. So that is step one of glycolysis. The second key step in glycolysis is this phosphorylated glucose is broken down into two molecules of triose phosphate. And each molecule of triose phosphate has three carbon atoms. So that is a very simple step. It just involves splitting phosphorylated glucose into two molecules of triose phosphate. Step number three is then each triose phosphate is turned into pyruvate and pyruvate still has three carbon atoms. Now this transition of triose phosphate into pyruvate involves quite a few steps, but I just want you to remember that it involves oxidation. And that is really important because here, NAD is going to act as our oxidizing agent. It is going to help oxidize that triose phosphate and itself is going to become reduced. And that means that when it collects those hydrogens or electrons from the triose phosphate, which has then been oxidized, NAD will become reduced to reduced NAD or NADH as we described before. Also in this process of converting triose phosphate into pyruvate, we generate two molecules of ATP. So for every single triose phosphate being oxidized to pyruvate, we generate two molecules of ATP. And this generation of ATP here is called substrate level phosphorylation. So now we're going to do some math. So we're going to work out how many ATP molecules we make from every single glucose molecule that feeds into glycolysis. So remember in step one, we spent two molecules of ATP. So we can say minus two. And in the final step, so the third step, we made a total of four ATP molecules because for every triose phosphate being turned into pyruvate, we made two molecules of ATP. So collectively we've made four and we can say plus four. So the net gain of ATP, or in other words, the overall gain of ATP is minus two plus four, which is plus two molecules of ATP for every single molecule of glucose that is fed into glycolysis. So if you get asked how many molecules of ATP do we make from glycolysis from a single molecule of glucose, the answer is a net of two molecules of ATP because we spent two at the start, but we made four at the end in the third step. So overall, we made two ATP molecules. So that is glycolysis, your three steps summarized. Remember it is the phosphorylation of glucose, and there are three reasons why we do that. We then split phosphorylated glucose into two molecules of triose phosphate. And finally, we turn each molecule of triose phosphate into pyruvate, which involves oxidation, and it also involves the generation of two molecules of ATP for every single molecule of triose phosphate oxidized to pyruvate. So that is it for part two of respiration. I hope you learned something and I hope it was useful. Definitely give it a thumbs up if you did. Comment down below, subscribe if you are new, and I will speak to you as always very soon in another video. Bye guys.